We're in a very, very difficult situation at all levels. So I think I would hope that the people who are pushing back on the recommendations for mitigation measures just look at the numbers, look at the facts. They're staring us right in the face. You know, we're not talking about shutting down the country and locking down completely. Welcome back to Quick Take Charge. I'm Tim Stenemek. That was, of course, the director of the National Institutes of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, Dr. Anthony Fauci on CBS's Face the Nation on Sunday. A COVID-19 vaccine developed by the University of Oxford and AstraZeneca prevented a majority of people from getting the disease in a large trial. It's another promising development in the quest to end the pandemic. Joining us now from London for more is Airfinity CEO Rasmus Hansen. Airfinity studies and ranks the success likelihood of vaccine candidates. Rasmus, it's great to have you on Quick Take today. Uh, some mixed numbers, though, this morning with initial headlines saying that the vaccine was 70 percent effective. But when you, you know, scratch the surface a little bit, it rose to 90 percent in a two dose version. How difficult or helpful is it to compare early data on vaccines uh, against each other? I think I think that is very important, and I would say I think this is this is very very significant news out of uh, AstraZeneca and Oxford this this morning that we, the whole world has been anticipating because there's there's no doubt that the world would not be able to end the pandemic without large scale production uh, ability like what what Astra brings to the table. So I think it's it's a very very significant piece of news, and and yes, the efficacy is not uh, as high as we saw with 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 some of the others, but it's still much higher than the fifty percent. Kind of lower tier that FDA had had said, and I think it's still also higher than than many had anticipated. So, so I think overall a, a really really positive uh, positive day on the vaccine front. Let there be no doubt about that. So, on the whole, what did we we learn today from the Oxford vaccine results, and how does it change the the timeline for when we will see widespread vaccination in the U.S. and uh, around the world? Yes. Yeah, so, so, so what we learned is that it is, uh, is it is effective. That it basically works to to uh, to to prevent uh, infections. We also have good indications that it prevents against the more severe cases. Hospitalized. There were no hospitalizations, no severe cases uh, in the vaccinated group. We don't know how many were in the placebo group, but still, it it it, it turns it it indicates that these these are very positive um, developments. I would also say that the number really to watch here is the production number. Mm. Because if you, if you compare the production capacity of these very vaccines, the numbers are quite startling. Um, Astra is projected to produce up um, more than 3 billion next year. So a third of the entire global production of uh, COVID-19 vaccines is, is uh, bound to come from the AstraZeneca one, but largely due to large production facilities in India and other places. So in comparison, Moderna is projecting 500 million uh, uh, to 1 billion. Uh, Pfizer is saying around 1, 1 billion, but it's still to be seen. So, so, so th that's, that's really the, the, the key number to, uh, to watch out for. Are they scaling the production in the numbers uh, we uh, will need going forward? It also raises the question, I think, too, uh, about whether or not the differences in vaccines matter to the, to the everyday person who, who will but get vaccinated, right? It's not like we, we sort of care where our, our tetanus shot comes from or, or other vaccines come from. And I wonder if consumers are even going to be given a choice as to which vaccine they're going to get, because that, that hasn't happened in the past, right? No, I mean, I, I, I think you have, a, you have a good point. You know, the, the uh, Pfizer and Moderna had like 95% efficacy. This uh, half a dose and double dose, uh, or two dose uh, uh, from, from AstraZeneca up to 90%. So that, 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 you know, that's, that's a fairly marginal number. And, and I think you also have to take into account pricing here because the price differences are, are vast, right? Um, AstraZeneca has promised around $4 a, a dose to the world. Um, where Pfizer and Moderna is plus uh, 25 and more, maybe up to like 40 or 50 dollars uh, per dose. So those are those are very significant. So I, I think what we what, what we'll see is that some, especially in the Western world, will probably benefit mostly from Moderna and 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 Pfizer, and then big parts of the rest of the world will really you know they'll depend on on Astra. And it's you know if you look at the numbers, India seems to get up to a hundred million very soon. Mm -hmm. uh, Still, will get a lot. Um, China will get a lot of the the, the Astra vaccines. Where where Pfizer, uh, Pfizer and Moderna is actually largely going to the U.S. to begin with, some to the U.K. Uh, so so um, so those kind of distribution deals are also a, a kind of I think an important part of the picture we have to look out for. Are, are there any implications there of of the wealthier areas of the world getting uh, the mRNA vaccines versus the the developing countries? 
getting the more so the AstraZeneca version of it? Well, I, you know, if, if, if the mRNA is more effective, of course, that, that will mean that, that the, the developed world will get faster to herd immunity. But, you mm. know, if, 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 the, if the difference is what we're seeing right now, then, then I don't think it would make, make a huge di uh, difference. I think one, one, one data point also that we really looked out for this morning is transmission. Right, because one thing is that it, it it protects you from from getting ill, but it also does also protect transmissions, which is really needed for for the herd immunity. And there are indications that it actually might, because we saw fewer uh, asymptomatic carriers in the vaccinated group, according to Astra's numbers. So that that does seem to indicate that there is a potential uh, protection against trans transmissions, which would really mean a lot for how we see the the vaccine being uh, evolved or, or kind of the uh, uh, pandemic evolve over the coming half a year to uh, to a year. What about when it comes to the logistics of this? We know that the Pfizer vaccine has to be kept in extremely cold conditions uh, in, in order for it to remain effective. Uh, Moderna, not so much. Uh, I'm, I'm wondering about the, the way that these vaccines need to be kept and the way that they travel and, and how that will affect logistics. And if that means that the AstraZeneca vaccine uh, is, is more likely to see widespread distribution just on that basis alone. Yeah, no, there's absolutely no doubt about that. That 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 uh, at, that big parts of the world would not be able to put up uh, the cold chain uh, the facilities needed to distribute uh, of the Pfizer and also to some extent the Moderna. They will depend on Astra and some of the others in the pipeline. J and J looks very promising. Uh, we have to see what comes in Black of Klein and Sanofi. Some of some of those more traditional. Uh, uh, types of vaccines where we actually have a setup, we have a global setup for, for the transporting, distributing that to the, you know, to the end doctor. You know, it's 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 a very complex route, and and I don't think that many would really think that that would be possible if we only had the mRNA vaccines uh, available. I think maybe in five years' time, the the, the world would would uh, have that setup, but short term, that's. Uh, that's just not there. And, and I think it requires too much of an investment. I think what I hear from several countries is that they're not necessarily willing to make that investment if they have an alternative like the, uh, like the Astra vaccine, which I think makes, makes very much sense. Airfinity CEO Rasmus Hansen in London. Rasmus, thanks so much for joining us on Quick Take this morning. We appreciate your time. The biggest stories, the moment they happen from around the globe. Subscribe to Bloomberg Quick Take now for insight in an instant.